Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video in our series of videos on Excel basics uh, is going to deal with the count ifs function. Okay? Uh, that's the count ifs function. That's count if with a small s. So that's subtly different to the count if function. It's a function that allows us to count how many values in a particular range yeah, meet a certain number of criteria where they have to satisfy all criteria to be counted okay so for example i might want to count uh, how many values in this range of values how many values are greater than 65 and less than 70 okay i might want to count how many values are greater than or equal to 68 and less than 72 and so on and so forth so let's deal with the first option. How to count how many values are greater than a specific value and less than another value. So the function we're going to use is count ifs. So once again, to go into function mode, we hit the equals key, followed by the name of the function, which is count ifs, followed by an open round brace. And what we can actually see here is the first thing that's bolded in the syntax yeah, is it says criteria range one. So I need to specify the range of values that I'd like to count. So I like to count from here down to here, okay? And then I hit comma, and now you can actually see that criteria 1 now is specified. And my criteria 1 is going to be if the value is bigger than 65. So let's specify that. So I want to count them values if they're greater than 65. And I close off the quotation marks here, and then I move on with a comma, to the next criteria range okay so the other criteria is that the values are less than 70 so I need to specify the criteria range again for a second time so what I'll do is I'll just highlight these values again okay down to the end followed by a comma and now what you can actually see is criteria 2 is now specified criteria 2 being if the value is less than 70 okay so let's specify that it's if the value is less than 70 Okay, so just close that off. So it's going to count values in this particular range okay, of values if they're bigger than 65 and if they're less than 70. So let's hit return there and you can actually see that we get 20. There's 20 values in this range that are bigger than 65 and less than 70. Let's do the next example. Uh, so I'd like to calculate how many values are greater than or equal to 68 and less than 72. So let's do that. So I'm going to say equals to go into function mode, followed by the name of the function, which is count ifs, uh, followed by an open round brace. I specified the first, the, the range that I'd like to count with respect to the first condition. So it's from 69 here down to this corner here, followed by a comma. I specified the first condition. And the first condition is if the value okay, is greater than or equal to 68. Okay? So the value needs to be bigger than or equal to 68. Now I know the way this particular this particular notation here is listed it might be a little bit confusing but really what we're saying is that 68 needs to be less than or equal to the value I want to count which is the same as saying that the value can be equal to or bigger than 68 and if it is count it. So specifying that in here if I was to read this from left to right let me actually just put in 68 okay what this is saying here is count values in the range from c6 to g17 if that's the greater than sign so if they're greater than that's the equal sign so that means if they're greater than or equal to 68 let's hit a comma now to go on to the next condition specify the range again so from here down to the end okay and let's hit a comma again to specify the second criteria now the second criteria is if the value is less than 70 sorry it's in this case here if the value is less than 72 so let's specify that it's less than 72 so when i'm reading this i read the relational operator as is so in this case this is saying count values in c6 to g17 if they're that's the less than sign so if they're less than 72 and I close off the round brace and I hit return and that tells me there's actually 20 values also in the data set that are bigger than or equal to 68 and less than 72. Okay, Let's do another one. Let's say between 66 and 73. Okay? But values that are greater than 66 and less than or equal to 73. So once again, this is equal to count ifs 
me. I specify my first criteria range from 69 here down to 66, followed by a comma. I specify my first criteria. Well, I want to, if 66 is less than the value, which is the same as saying if the value is bigger than 66. So what I'm going to count is if values are bigger than, okay, 66, okay, and hit a comma, go on to the next criteria range from 69 down to 66. But this time I want to count values if they're less than or equal to 73. So I want to count values that are less than or equal to 73. Okay, and if I hit return on that, it says there's 32 values in that particular range that are strictly bigger than 66 and less than or equal to 73. And let's do the final one where it's inclusive of the lower bound and the upper bound. So this is equal to count ifs. The criteria range is from here to the end. Okay, the condition is if 62 is less than or equal to my value, which means that my value must be equal to or bigger than 60 to 62. So what we're going to say is we're going to count if my value is greater than or equal to 62. Okay. The next condition then is if my value is less than or equal to 71. So put in my criteria range. Okay. Uh, followed by the condition. The condition is if my value is less than or equal to 71. And that counts them. There's 44 values in this data set that are bigger than or equal to 62 or less than or equal to 71. Okay, guys, that was just four applications of the count ifs function. You can use it in many other cases, yeah? Uh, the values don't have to be numerical, okay? But in this case, we're just concentrating on numbers just to keep things uh, keep things simple at this stage. Uh, so once again, guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope this video was somewhat helpful and intuitive.